We just joined um, Fatima Chami and I'm um, uh, the Jasmine User Support uh, um, member in CEDA. Um, so I'll be talking today about transition to SLURM, which was part of the migration uh, um, plan to, of um, Jasmine this year. So I'll, get, I'll give a quick introduction about the new Shadow Lord Slurm and uh, why we need it, um, some essential command on Slurm, and also what has been uh, implemented uh, in parallel to the transition to the new Shadow Lord. So Lotus is a, a complex uh, multi-node cluster of different um, model and is composed of compute node and GPU nodes and it needs a, a workload manager um, to manage the resources. The first workload manager was LSF uh, which was running um, out of support so the replacement was uh, necessary and the popular alternative to the IBM LSF uh, uh, workload manager was uh, SLURM. So SLURM is, uh, stands for a simple Linux utility for resource management, was developed at Liverpool, uh, Livermore and it's um, um, highly scalable for clusters, uh, for, for the cluster so it can be used for small to large cluster size and also scalable for job shadowing. Um, um, so it, ha it has um, I would say optimize, it's been optimized for the, to fit or meet the throughput, throughput in Jasmine and also believed to be used by many top 500 supercomputers. Um, as I said, we need to replace because we were um, with the um, support for IBM platform um, uh, ended, so we needed a replacement and Slurm is an open, soft, uh, an open source software it offers the capability uh, of LSF, which is queuing system to maximize the utilization of the cluster, highly scalable. And also it, it was chosen because it's provide, um, it's consist, it's been used um, in Archer MetaOffice. It's give a, a bit of easy transition for a user who works in different clusters so they can find themselves very familiar using the same scheduler on Jasmine. So what we did in during this transition, we have kept the same number of submission nodes. Um, it's just that those nodes has been upgraded to the uh, new operating system. Um, and we have, in addition to this, we have provided a, a one node, which is different. It has a different uh, processor model, which is AMD, which is node side three, which I put a note here. We also uh, kept the same number of queues and we kept the same configuration for those queues in terms of time limits and uh, CPU resources to make the transition as easy as possible. It's just the management is done by a different piece of software, which is slow. So this is just now we the, the when we started um, the, the migration or to the new system was done uh, um, gradually and now we have the whole of Lotus managed by Slurm um, and this is just a kind of nice diagram showing um, showing the queues and this workflow. So you have the Slurm scheduler to schedule the job to a specific queue. Jobs will wait in the queue according to the priority, which is the priority of the queue and the priority of the uh, job itself. And then the Slurm, get, um, Slurm will cycle through the, uh, the uh, compute node to see which compute is available and which compute has the required uh, resources. And then the job gets allocated the resources and starts running in Lotus. And when the job is on in Lotus, it, it can access all this um, a working area like home, group workspace, cedar, and it has access to the work scratch area uh, if needed. So what are the important uh, features just to, to, to know is that um, Slurm has a, a mapping of what we call partition and account. Well, partition is similarly a queue, and account is, is a grouping of users 
to, to give them access to a partition. So the default account for all users in Jasmine is Jasmine. And those, the account Jasmine has access to all of the six uh, uh, um, standard queues. So you might uh, initially there has been if you're not if a user is not a part of this account, of this Jasmine account, um, they might not be able we, they will not be able to access the queues. And sometimes this happens because the um, we add users is done manually. So sometimes users might try to submit and they might get a message account and partition not matching. It just ha means that they are not in that Jasmine account and they will just contact us and we'll add them. Another feature that has been enabled during this transition is what we call the control group interface, which um, limits the resources usage per job. So if a job got, has an allocation of, of, of resources, for example, the CPU, and at runtime it starts to exceed the allocation, it will be uh, completely constrained to that allocation. It won't go and consume other, C other CPUs in the same host. But it will start running slow. I, I think I've already mentioned this uh, yesterday. And um, if it runs slow, it might, might just be killed at the end. Uh, another feature is the queuing of jobs in Slurm. So if the node starting um, having um, being faulty or having low memory, um, there is there is a recurring, um, the job get recurred, but the user can release the job recurred to resubmit them again if they want to. Um, also, um, I wouldn't say node state and well job state. There has been another state that was added in for the job state, which is when the job is about to complete. Um, Slurm has this uh, feature of CG, meaning the job is about to complete. Um, um, comparing to LSF, is it a completed or is it running? And also gives access to see the notes, note state, what is down in draining, draining or in idle. Um, so it's quite good information in terms of uh, seeing how what the overall uh, status of the cluster. So this is just a quick essential Sloan commands uh, that are easy to help the conversion to do to, from LSF to Sloan. So um, all features like uh, submitting interactive session are available on Slurm and can be easily converted. So the of workflow can be easily converted to this. And the majority of the, the, um, the command can be grouped in terms of submission, controlling your job and also getting information about a historical um, job that has that run in the past. You've got two minutes, Fatima, okay. okay. So this is just a quick, uh, what, you, what Sloan gives, like in terms of node states, you can be able to um, see which hosts are allocated to those queues and their state. I'm just gonna go quickly to, through this, also checking the state of the node through uh, using S control command and uh, controlling uh, job monitoring in Sloan. Um, I'll just skip through these slides. Um, Job array and job dependency are all available on Slurm. And I'll come to this slide, which is differences. Of course, uh, Slurm is, an, is a popular uh, alternative uh, to LSF, but they are still different. So they're sharing the common feature, which is submission, mechanism of uh, submitting and controlling. But there are other features in, in LSF that are not available in Slurm. For example, um, uh, submitting jobs uh, on the fly, as assigning project name is not, uh, well, it is available in Slurm, but it's not done by the user on the fly when they submit the jobs. So this is done on the admin level. Another feature, which is the LSF job grouping, which gives you a hierarchical organization of jobs. This is not available in Slurm. And so for s some of this feature, my if, if possible to mimic them, why not? Might need some scripting. And that is, that is at the cost of time, which is limited. So um, users who are really keen on doing maybe some scripting, and if it's well, they can come to us and then maybe we can consider using, um, make that centrally available for others. New feature is the um, new MPI library. So oh, the, um, we, in the past we used platform uh, MPI, uh, of course, because it's running out of support, now the replacement is OpenMPI. And the reason it was chosen because it's a support network, network link failure. It's an open source and um, 
it's, uh, it's, it's, it's MPR3 compliance, three version available like version 3.1.1, version 4, and it's fully supports, um, supports uh, MPR-IO. But again, I mentioned the MPI should be on the, only on the parallel file system, uh, scratch area work, scratch PW. Um, MPI implica implication, so any MPI application has to be built against the new open MPI. So this is a requirement and those, and this requirement uh, is for C, for Tranco, any compiled languages, any MPI program using singularity has to be built against this library, um, MPI, uh, binding uh, for Python, Pilot CDF. And the way to, uh, to invoke the MPI implementation is through module environments, um, EEB, Open MPI. We, as I said, we have th three different module environments for different versions of MPI and different compilers. And MPI run is the command to use to launch the parallel MPI job. So this is just an example of invoking an interactive session and compiling some code, loading the, mo the module uh, Intel and the and open MPI module environment, compiling a co code and running and getting some results. Uh, the last, uh, I think this is my last slide, or one just before the last, is in the, we introduce a new, um, a new set of uh, uh, hosts, which are, have a different uh, processor model to the previous one, which is an AMD. In total, 43 AMD nodes have been added. Each node has 48 cores with a large memory of one terabyte. And these uh, hosts are grouped in, uh, under the host group EPC 21024D. Um, some implication on using AMD is it's not all the time an Intel compiled code can run on an AMD, so they might trigger some error, especially if some compilation um, uh, or compilation flag like optimization and other architecture dependent. So it is better to compile the code and running on the same CPU model um, uh, machine. And that is done by selecting um, uh, the constraint flag. Uh, for this. So this is applicable whether it's to AMD or Intel. Compiled language should be running on the same uh, processor model on which they were, in which the binary was generated. And uh, these are lists of references and um, thank you. <laughs>